relations administrator. This month marks the 10-year anniversary when Cecil Field became part of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority as one of the four airports in our airport system. And so this show is dedicated to Cecil Field and for my first guest I want to introduce Mr. Rusty Chandler who is the manager of Cecil Field out on the west side. Welcome Rusty. Thanks Debbie. It's good being here. Well, 10 years ago, we acquired Cecil Field, and so I just want to kind of go through and give a little perspective what Cecil was before, the past, present, and looking to the future as well. And then in our second half, we'll talk to some of our tenants who really helped make Cecil Field successful. So you ready to give us a little history lesson? Yeah, uh, Cecil Field actually started as a training facility back in 1942. Uh, for the military preparing for uh, war. Uh, interesting, in Jacksonville itself, most of the airports around here started as a military airport. Right. And I'm gonna, I don't mean to interrupt. Let me just go ahead, because we do have a picture, actually, of uh, the airport back in the 1940s. So please, go ahead. Yeah, as it started back in uh, 1942, uh, you can see right to the north there, there are two hangars. Those two hangars are still there. As a matter of fact, we have uh, Commander Kenny today that houses his Coast Guard in one of those. Uh, vintage hangars, that's kind of a vintage style airport with a cylinder shaped uh, airfield and then three runways for training. So, so this is the circle here you're talking mm -hmm. about, okay. And then the three runways going along the two sides and one right through it. Right. Yeah, and then after World War II, the training facility at Cecil Field actually closed and it was uh, reestablished back in the late 40s and then uh, with the new jet technology during the Korean War the Navy needed a master jet base and that's a, a, an airport that can handle jet aircraft and has to have wide runways and long runways. Right. So it started to trans, uh, transcend from a f uh, reciprocating engine to a jet engine type of airport. Right. And, and I, think I think we have a picture on there that shows that that's the configuration of today. Um, it has two sets of parallel runways. The long runway is 12,500 feet long. That's oriented there. to the north-south. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. And it has three other runways that are 8,000 feet long. They're all 200 feet wide. And it's very unique to have an airport and an airfield and the configuration uh, in the civilian community. You just don't build airports like this anymore. Exactly. And uh, can you tell us how much acreage did the authority receive from the Navy as part of this transfer? Okay. The breakdown of the BRAC Commission, uh, at one time Cecil Field actually had a little over 20,000 acres of, um, for NES Cecil Field. That included White House. Mm -hmm. It was one of the largest land masses in the military at that time. Uh, the breakdown was somewhere around 11,000 for the city. Um, some of it, <coughs> excuse me, about 700 acres went to Clay County and the Jacksonville Aviation Authority got 6,081, which primarily is the east side, the south and the east side of the, what is Cecil Field, the runways, the taxiways, the, air, uh, the airfield specific, the hangars and buildings pretty much Aviation Avenue and Crossover, which mm -hmm. divides Cecil Field from the city portion and the JA's portion. Now, what were some of the challenges after receiving it from the Navy as a military base, basically, and then preparing it to be a civilian or general aviation use airport? What were some of the things that had to be done in order to take on that new role? Well, if you can imagine, if you're going to give something up because of budget cuts, that a lot of money wasn't put into it. And the, the thought of closing Cecil actually started in 1993, so six mm -hmm. years prior to closure, uh, the military really stopped investing in the Cecil field. So to answer your question, just about everything needed attention, infrastructure especially. Uh, there were a lot of buildings that, due to code, um, due to not meeting really civilian need had to be demolished. Right. Um, we did a infrastructure for electrical work, five phases of work, which included airfield siding. Now that electrical work is not like your house or a building. Right. That was the airfield. Mm -hmm. That was taxiway lights, runway lights, 
um, generators, airfield vaults, it's high dollar, and it had to be brought up to the FAA standard, of which we did, in signage package. Um, areas of like pavement maintenance, um, drainage. Uh, a real big one here in the past few years we've been doing is roof repair. Mm -hmm. uh, we've spent a, a few million dollars just re-roofing buildings. And the hangars, they're, they're quite large structures, so it does cost a lot of money to do that. So as far as the buildings themselves, we had to do a lot of maintenance to get them up to code. And I know there was kind of a, a timeline of when we hoped that we could have those facilities leased out. And my understanding is we were ahead of schedule in the percentage of capacity that we wanted to be at by this time, really, 10 years later. So where are we 10 years later? Well, 10 years regard? later, we are completely leased out with the exception of a couple small buildings that are, one's uh, 2,400 square feet, another one's 3,000 square feet, and they really don't meet the need for a, for a tenant. Um, all of our major facilities, the hangars, the ramps, the major buildings, are all leased out. As a matter of fact, they were all leased out by the year 2005. And 2005 was um, a transition from operating in the red to operating in the green. Cecil is a profitable airport. Mm -hmm. It turns a profit. It sustains its own operation. Um, as a, we are so strapped for capacity, we're actually building hangars right. and now expanding Cecil Field. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exciting stuff 10 years later, looking back to where we were to where we are now. But as I mentioned at the beginning, Cecil Field was the fourth airport to join the Jacksonville airport system that's managed by the Aviation Authority. What is Cecil's role? What is the benefit to Jacksonville to having a Cecil Field? Well, Jacksonville is kind of unique when you talk about an airport system. We have JIA, and everybody's very familiar with JIA cargo and uh, commercial traffic that handles passengers. You have Craig Airport, which does your business aviation, corporate aviation downtown, and they really kind of transcending into a flight training um, airport. Then you have Hurlong on the west side, close to Cecil, and that is more of a recreational airport. Cecil is more of a industrial manufacturing um, maintenance governmental airport. That's kind of its role. It is more of an industrial in nature. Uh, we house tenants like we're going to talk to Matt Eaton from Flightstar that is a <laughs> FAA certified maintenance facility for large aircraft. The large aircraft that fly the cargo and the passenger today, that is at Cecil Field. That's what they repair um, as well as other work. And then we have a lot of governmental entities that are out there. The state, Florida Army and Air National Guard, mm -hmm. and the U.S. Coast Guard and Customs and Border Patrol aviation units are out there as well. And then we have, a little, we have a balance in between. Do you have an idea, roughly, of how many people are employed at Cecil Field, just from the aviation side? That's a good question. I would say somewhere around 3,500 employees are currently out at Cecil Field at, on the JAA side of the airport. That's significant, yeah, I think, given that it was practically nothing when we took it over or it was deeded over to us 10 years ago. Yeah, and you know, we have a lot of growth. Right. Um, you see in this current economy, you see a downturn, you see a lot of employers uh, reducing the number of employees out there. At Cecil Field, uh, we are growing. Florida Army National Guard is going through an expansion program. They just built a new 35,000 square foot hangar. They're modifying their uh, facility and they're uh, increasing it so they can handle more folks coming into the Guard. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard, we're going to talk to Commander Kenny about their expansion efforts and they have expanded. We've worked with the Government Services Agency to help grow and expand the Coast Guard's presence. Uh, U.S. Customs, Border Patrol, are, are working and expanding their operation out there. Uh, we do, we're going to talk about Florida you know, well, it used to be Florida Community yeah. College and Florida State College, Florida State Jackson, College of Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, they are building, or we are working with them to construct a large facility. LSI, another tenant, mm -hmm. uh, they're looking at moving their corporate headquarters there. Boeing, expanding operations. So you see a lot of the tenants growing. It's kind of an oddity for the economy today. Right, right. Kind of counterintuitive. Well, I, I want to go back because we have another photograph of. Looking to the future, uh, this is kind of a, 
architectural rendering of potential growth and development of a lot of just green area out there that could be used for industrial and commercial development. So what, what do you see in the future as far as this type of non-aviational development? Well, you know, airports typically are required by the FAA to have an airport master plan. And that master plan typically involves the airport proper itself, runways, taxiways, infrastructure to meet the aviation need. Uh, at Cecil Field, we took it a step further and did a site master development plan, mm -hmm. which looks at a lot of acreage that we have, which is about 3,000 extra acres out there, that we can develop. Right. So we engaged a company to help us develop and plan for the future for the non-aviation developmental growth. And we've identified about 14 million square feet of space that can house industrial, uh, mixed retail, logistics, types of services out there. So we will have a nice mix of aviation and non-aviation and hopefully we'll bring in a, you know, more employees in the future to develop the west side of Jacksonville. Exactly. And so this is really an exciting look into the future. These are 30, 40 year plans. Yeah, that picture right there is actually a full build out. Full build out, out 30 of years site development. 30 years out. So commercial space travel. Now that's something that's a little closer to being done. What's happening with Cecil Field regarding commercial space travel? Yeah, you know, Florida wants to stay in the hunt for maintaining its space operations. And space certification for Cecil Field, it's sometimes confusing to some people, but in the past decade, the federal government has gotten into commercial space. They're trying to separate governmental space operations and commercial space operations. And they're actually trying to develop that commercial space development. Now, uh, what Cecil Field is doing is not governmental space travel, it's commercial space travel. Mm -hmm. Commer commercial space travel is horizontal lift. It's just like a regular aircraft right. departs the, um, the airport vicinity, in, in our case goes over the water about 30,000 feet, launches rocket power, and then goes suborbital, and then comes back down to uh, Cecil Field. We have endured a process to do an environmental assessment and it's been about a year and a half to two years. We looked at all the different factors involved in becoming a spaceport. Uh, we have submitted that to the FAA. We actually had final comments and a public hearing in May with the FAA and uh, we are now answering our final questions for our certification. We hope to have the certification here in a couple months. Now with that certification it's like we will be an airport and a spaceport. Now, it to, we would have to attract an operator in that would operate a commercial space vehicle, right. and then they also would have to be certified by the FAA to operate on Cecil Field. But we've got the infrastructure already in place yes. for those operators who are looking for the next great thing coming down the pike regarding air travel and space travel. So it's exciting times at Cecil yeah. Field. Well, you know, that's interesting because uh, when they started to look at what facilities were available and, air, and airports were available in the state of Florida. It couldn't be a commercial service airport, one that had mm -hmm. scheduled passenger traffic. So they started looking at existing facilities that met the requirements. And the requirement was 200 feet wide, runway by 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. open space, and some other things. One airport in Florida met that requirement, so that was and Cecil. And that was Field. Cecil. Exciting things. Well, Thank you, Rusty. Stick around because we want to have you come back in this next section of this show. Don't go away. We're going to talk to some of the tenants at Cecil and learn more about this exciting airport. More than 45,000 kids in Northeast Florida don't have anyone to take them to a ball game. With Big Brothers and Big Sisters in Northeast Florida, you can help. The way you can help is with Big Brothers, Big Sisters' new program called Sports Buddies. Sports Buddies is for guys and gals who love sports and love kids. This gives kids a chance to go to games and get involved in some other great sports stuff. Take them fishing, play golf, or just toss a ball around. Get involved. Take a buddy to a ball game today. Call today and become a sports buddy. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. On today's program, we're talking about Cecil Field. It's been 10 years since Cecil Field joined the Jacksonville Aviation Authority family. 
In our first half, we learned a little bit about the past, present, and some of the future of Cecil Field. And in this segment, I want to introduce you to some very important tenants that help make Cecil Field a successful part of the airport system. And uh, we've invited Rusty back because he's our subject matter expert. And anything we don't we want to know about, Rusty can answer. So 